Welcome to Roden Valley's Virtual Assembly. There are, as always, so many students to congratulate this week, each and every one of them making us so very proud. The theme of the week is express yourself. Some have argued that self-expression is a vital piece of the puzzle that allows us to be our very best selves, reach our full potential and make valuable contributions to the world we live in. I'm sure you all have a good grasp on what self-expression is, but it's important to be reminded how often people share themselves with us and how often we have the opportunity to share ourselves with others in our daily lives. I typically associated self-expression with communication mediums such as paintings and poetry. But the more I think about our world and how it is evolving, the more I realise how we express ourselves has boundless possibilities. We express our ideas, feelings, culture, beliefs and values daily and therefore it is important that our words and actions contribute in a positive way to ourselves and others. Here are some inspirational individuals who are doing just that. When she was 11, Malala wrote and published an anonymous diary about her life in Pakistan under Taliban rule, which quickly gained huge attention. Soon she began to speak out more publicly about the need for girls to have access to education. But three years later, her life changed forever when in retaliation for her activism, she was shot in the head by a gunman on a school bus. The assassination attempt didn't stop her, however, and her profile has only risen further since then. She has appeared on the front cover of Time magazine and in 2014, she became the youngest person ever to win the Nobel Peace Prize and she has just completed her degree at Oxford University. Born in 2003, Greta is a teen activist who became a leading voice for climate change. Her activism started after convincing her parents to adopt several lifestyle choices to reduce their own carbon footprint. In August 2018, at age 15, she started spending her school day days outside the Swedish parliament to call for stronger action on climate change. After she addressed the 2018 United Nations Climate Change Conference, student strikes took place every week somewhere in the world. She has received numerous honours and different awards and has inspired an international movement to fight against climate change. Stormzy, we will name Michael, is a very successful grime artist. He has had to work hard to get where he is, but the most inspiring thing about him is how he has used his public platform to promote, support and encourage people to get their dreams. He recognised that black students were underrepresented at Cambridge University, so he set up a scholarship that pays the full tuition fees of successful applicants. He also saw a lack of black authors and realised that this leads to a lack of representation, so he set up a publishing house to publish work by black authors. He felt the government should have done more to help residents of the Grenfell Tower after the fire that claimed 72 lives and made hundreds of people homeless. So he called out for the government in the middle of his Brits performance on live TV. Stormzy tackles prejudice when he sees it, he stands up for others and he uses good fortune to help others who have not been able to find success. Now, here are some heroes that you may have not heard of that are making a real big difference. After reading about a charity, which usually provides menstrual products to girls in Africa, having to redirect products to Leeds because there were girls who couldn't afford them, Amika decided she had to do something to fight period po poverty in the UK. She founded Hashtag Free Periods when she was 17, organised a protest outside Downing Street, and in the wake of this pressure, the UK government announced it would be funding free sanitary products in all English schools and colleges. Jess and Samina are both young ambassadors for the Send My Friend to School campaign, which is fighting for all children to have quality education. As a co-founder of the Black Lives Matter LA Youth Vanguard, Abdullah has become one of her generation's most powerful voices on issues relating to social justice. 14-year-old Hans is a young radio reporter and an active member of his school's health club that organises events on issues such as HIV, teenage pregnancy and sanitation. And at 14, Julia successfully convinced the editor-in-chief of Seventeen magazine to feature real girls and healthy models without photoshopping, as she believes it was detrimental to our self-esteem. For expressing beliefs and ideas, everyone can make a difference and a positive contribution, no matter how big or how small. We would like to know how you express yourself. Please share your experiences of lockdown creatively. It could be a piece of artwork, it could be a poem, 
It could be a photograph. There'll be a different theme each week and your artwork will be displayed as part of a virtual gallery on our school Instagram and Twitter account. So please send a photo via email to Mrs. Dyson. Here are some ideas that hopefully will inspire you to share some of your own. students I hope you're all well it's me again Mrs Patel and this time I'm here to talk to you about how you can express yourself well in science you can express yourself in many different ways through practical work through written work and taking part in competitions to show that creative side of you which I'm sure you've all got hidden there somewhere I think expressing yourself is something you should all be really proud of and you shouldn't be ashamed of showing how you feel through many different ways. So be proud and get expressing. See you all soon. I think that the way that I express myself is the way that I communicate and how I fit into the world around me. And it communicates my ideas and my thoughts and the person that I am. There are lots of ways that I've found that I can express myself. One of them is through my family and my friends and my pets and my children and, it, and the ways that I can express my love and affection. I can express creativity and my love of being a teacher at Roding Valley. I can express my interests through visiting different places that really interest me, finding out more about them. And then it goes full circle as what I see and do gives me more to express and convey. Reading and music have always been important to me. And whilst I'm not musical or an author myself, uh, they help me to show my feelings. So, for example, singing whilst I'm driving at the top of my voice makes me feel happy always. I hope that you find places and things in your life that help you express and communicate who and what you are. Thank you for listening very important to express yourself if you don't if you don't make yourself heard then um, these thoughts and ideas and, and passions just get stuck in your head and they drive you mad I express myself through my music um, I express myself through writing I had a play uh, that was due to be performed this summer that I wrote last year that sadly isn't being done now because of lockdown but hopefully will get taken up uh, next year um, and also express myself and my opinions uh, about the world as I see them through ways that are more than just having a rant on social media. Um, about four or five years ago, there was a rumour that went round that certain subjects at GCSE, including drama, the one I teach, um, was going to be abolished by the, uh, the government. I didn't like that idea. I think GCSE drama is really important. So rather than just moan about it on Facebook, I started a petition through the uh, government petition website. Um, that petition, with a bit of help from uh, a singer called Billy Bragg, eventually managed to get 10,000 signatures and then 50,000 signatures and then eventually got 100,000 signatures. And that triggered a debate in Parliament. Um, and my name and my uh, question about the future of GCSE drama was debated in the Houses of Parliament. Um, and um, whether or not my campaign had any impact or not, I don't know, but I know that I still teach uh, GCSE drama and that my voice was heard and was championed at uh, the highest levels of government. Hi, I'm Mrs Dyson, and one of the main things I do is look after your emotional well-being. 
One of the things I'm passionate about is mindfulness. Mindfulness meditation means you're focusing on being in the moment, no matter what you're doing in that moment. You can practice it anywhere, at home, in your bedroom, looking through your window. But today I'm at my local park and I would like to share my view with you. Just notice what you see and what you can hear. Communication skills are vital for you to achieve your potential at school and in work and to have the confidence and the ability to influence social change. Debating develops creative thinking, problem solving and active listening, as well as the character attributes of resilience and empathy. It makes us good communicators and means that we are effective at influencing others, representing ourselves and making an impact. Let's have a look at our own debating team in action. This House believes that there is no longer any need for public schools, as the nation is already homeschooling themselves. In my speech, I will be making two points. Firstly, there are a lot of aspects of education that are not taught in schools anymore. School education is very test structured, and doing well in exams is often a main priority both for the school and for the student. This can lead to children learning things that they ultimately do not need to learn. Homeschooling would remove the possibility of this happening and make sure children learn things that they can apply when they leave school and go into the working world. Secondly, exams often lead to mental health struggles. The large amount of exams that are thrust upon students can often lead to them suffering from high stress and anxiety. Homeschooling removes the possibility of this happening as there is a less exam-based structure, decreasing the possibility of mental health struggles as a result of school stress. For these reasons and more, this house believes that there is no longer any need for schools and that children should be homeschooled instead. Thank a big issue with the proposed motion is that most children, especially those with younger age brackets, would struggle to understand how to plan their own lessons according to their suitable curriculum, resulting in poor or inefficient learning. What are these children supposed to do if their parents aren't educated to help with these problems? Yes, in this day and age, we are surrounded by technology that can help with these problems. But is it really healthy for a child to be reliant on it for their education? Also, what some might say that schools add a lot of stress to children's lives and that its closure would help their mental health. I would argue that most actually provide effective and helpful techniques to combat stress, like school counselling, opportunities to socialise and student mentoring. Another point to consider would be that many children require teaching from their parents or carers. However, most parents will be too busy working to do this. Children with learning difficulties would also need extra help. Not having a parent or teacher present especially if they're not professionally trained for these kinds of difficulties, will make it extremely hard for them to learn from home. Parents not being present will also cause problems, as it is illegal for a person under 12 to be home without supervision. You could argue that children being home more will give them more time to bond with their parents and family. However, homeschooling can be stressful, and families that live in cramped conditions could get irate with each other, which will cause arguments. People who are qualified teachers will also lose their jobs, as there are currently 506,400 people working as teachers in various parts of the education system in the UK. With this many people losing their jobs, other jobs may become overcrowded. Parents may not want to or know how to homeschool their children and might not necessarily have enough money to hire someone to help with their child's education. Overall, we think that the school system should go back to normal after this lockdown, as it can be stressful for parents and children alike. Hundreds of thousands of people will lose their jobs, and children will lack social skills and interaction. All this, along with mental health issues it could cause, leads us to believe that yes, schools should be kept open after lockdown. So when and where did human language begin? Did it start with one language that spread and eventually became subdivided into many? Or did different languages develop separately in isolated places? Well, because spoken language appeared so long ago, there isn't definitive answers to these questions. 
However, that does not stop researchers from proposing theories about the beginnings of this ability that make us uniquely human. Some researchers believe that language may have developed from cave drawings. Specifically, they think that ancient artwork located in caves with good acoustics may have inspired humans to develop the focal communication that exists today. Long before spoken language, humans also had the ability to communicate without speech. This is called nonverbal communication and we still use it today. Nonverbal communication is a vital form of communication. It is a natural unconscious language that broadcasts our feelings and intentions in any given moment and gives us clues into the feelings of others around us. One primary function of nonverbal communication is to express our emotions for our facial expressions, gestures, body language and posture. Our posture can indicate our confidence, openness and attitude, whether we are sitting or standing. Despite some facial expressions being universal, our gestures certainly are not. Have a look at this quiz and have a go. social media promote self-expression? That's a very good question and a straight answer doesn't really exist. Social networking gives us a chance to express ourselves in our online network, also share our lives with others and connect with individuals who think like us. So in one way it is the ultimate form of self-expression in that every single post or tweet you send is either an idea, a meme, picture or other share with its information that inspires, motivates or excites you. On the other hand, many people begin to express themselves online, but can start to lose their skills of self-expression in the non-digital world. Social media may be helpful for some people, but actually practical concerns like security and privacy keep many from truly expressing themselves. The bottom line, well, social media serves facilitates expression, but how much of that expression is authentic expression of our true selves? That question has yet to be answered. As with most skills, the best way to improve your self-expression is to practice. And here's how you can in your different subjects. So expressing yourself in history, for me, one of the easiest things in the world to do, and it allows you to express yourself in so many ways. So for example, with empathy, understanding what people's lives were like and what their positions were and how things panned out for them, for understanding what happened in the past, different events, um, and different reasons for things happening, just out of interest, just to know what went on and to investigate and to explore. To be able to debate, to have more than one point of view, to develop your own opinions and be able to express those opinions. So what do you think happened? Why do you think it was important? And to argue, everybody loves a good argument, especially when you feel that you've got the right point. There are other ways you can express yourself in history too. You can make things. So we've done some of that at school. Some of you have made castles and some people even made castles from cake. Some people made them from wood. Some people made them from Lego. Some people made them from a variety of different materials. Some of you made witch bottles, uh, very closely related to what was actually made at the time. Some of you made shields and shield designs. And there are lots of ways in which people relive and express themselves through history. So you might visit or have seen a reenactment of a battle or of a jousting competition, something like that. You can express yourself by visiting places, going to sites, at the moment, it's a bit difficult, but you could do a virtual tour. So just this afternoon, you could get online and do a virtual tour of Pompeii. You could do a virtual tour of a museum as well. And when things do open up again, museums are free. Most museums are free to enter and have a walk around. So if there's something that you're particularly interested, 
in, find a museum that has exhibits and displays on that and go and see it. Films and documentaries and programs are a great way of finding out more about something or a period in history that you're interested in. And these will help you express yourself um, much more knowledgeably about the things that you are interested in. Looking at books, articles, biographies, diaries, all of these help you understand, uh, they give you uh, uh, opinions and they help you to argue. Looking at art is another way that you can understand and uh, have empathy and read into and infer what was uh, what was happening in the past. And online history. There are loads of sites, there are loads of documentaries, there are loads of uh, places for information, um, finding out about the past. You can even find out what happened on this day in history by using the On This Day site, uh, which is easily connected to. Hi, Rodan Valley. I just thought I'd quickly discuss about expressing yourself within sport. Um, I think it's really important to have sport because not only does it allow you to express yourself and your passions and show who you are as a person while playing a game, whether you're um, competitive, whether you're not, um, it allows you to give that a little bit of release. Um, as all of you know, I still play sport. Um, I do it during my season. I play three times a week. Um, without that, I would definitely lose my mind um, it allows me to give my release it allows me to express myself differently to how I would every single day um, or whether I was talking to my friends whether I was talking to my colleagues it allows you to enable that bit of passion expressing yourself and um, it's really important that you have this in your life okay um, I love hearing about what you guys do to express yourself and seeing whether you're drawing whether you're dancing and um, because it just gets us to see you in a completely different light but yeah Thanks. Being you means sharing your ideas, pursuing your passions and expressing yourself. Remember, you can express yourselves in a variety of ways which we encourage you to explore. Expressing yourself may even help you find that special talent you possess. Ensure that you are expressing yourself in a positive manner and give one of these ideas a go. By definition, the word for expression is the action of making known your feelings and intentions. The action can be shown in many forms of presentation. It's the most important part for your soul to make connections. I've been rapping since way back when I was in school, rhyming words to a beat, telling you what I thought, causing a heap of trouble. My only resort was to keep the beat steady, keep my flow strong. Music is the art of expression and sound and can relieve all the tensions that are currently found. Music allowed me to express my sound, so find your own voice and send it around.